he, who created heaven and earth, out of his power and might. The poet's art, was from the start, a branch of wisdom's mighty tree. The task of poetry is holy, as all godly men agree. I, Rustabli, wrote this poem, a man whom fate would not release. Out of a tale, I made a poem, a sparkling diamond centerpiece. An ancient Persian tale I took, and in the Georgian tongue retold. Until that time, it was an unset pearl, from hand to hand it rolled. A lake of ebony I used as ink, my reed was like a dart. Whoever hears, the lines I have written, a spear will pierce his heart. Shota, Rustabli. The Knight in the Panther's Skin. The Story of Rost Evan, King of the Arabs. Once there ruled in Arabia, Rost Evan, a king by God's grace. Thriving, majestic, generous, modest though in the highest place. So just and merciful, many vassals did his service embrace. He was a fearless warrior, a peerless speaker, never base. Rost Evan had one child, a daughter, to the world a shining light. Like unto the stars she was, or a moon that makes the heavens bright. Whoever looked at her, was bereft, of his heart and soul and sight. It needs a wise man to praise her, with words both masterful and right. The name of this daughter was Tanadan, let it be known to all. When she'd grown to be a woman, her beauty held the sun in thrall. One day the king, in highest spirits, to his viziers sent a call. And he spoke graciously to them, when they'd assembled in his hall. He said, I need your wisest counsel, on a matter I'll declare, every rose will fade and wither, no matter though it once was fair. The dry rose falls within the garden, a new rose arises there. The sun has set for us, the night is dark. Why should we not despair? I grow old. Old age is like a sickness, a raging plague in me. It's the sorrow of the world. Only a few tomorrows we'll see. Of what worth is a light, when it's becoming darkness by degree? So let us crown, my daughter now. No son is worthier than she. The viziers said, King, why do you insist that you are old so soon? For though it's true, our rose has faded, we all know it as a boon. It still excels in scent and color, though its day is far past noon. What kind of star, dares offer challenge, even to a waning moon? Oh, King, please don't speak thus to us, your rose is not faded today. Bad counsel from you is better, than the good another might say. It is right to do, whatever, will make your heartache go away. It is best to give the kingdom, to her who holds the sun in sway. Although a woman, she is a sovereign, ordained by God's decree. We are not flattering you, but even in your absence agree. Like her radiance, her deeds are as bright, as the sunshine to see. Lions' whelps are equally lions, though female or male they be. Aftandile was a general, the commander-in-chief's own son. Tall and slim as a cypress he was his presence, the moon, and sun. His visage was, as pure as the clearest crystal, beard he had none. By Tanadan's luxurious lashes, he found himself undone. He kept his love madness hidden, lodged deep within him like a dart. Whenever he couldn't see her though, his roses fading would start. Whenever he saw her, fire blazed, his wound more sharply would smart. Love alone, should be blamed love with the power to break a man's heart. When he heard, that Tanadan would soon, come into her queenly own, Aftandile felt, as if water, on torturing flames had been thrown. He said, now her porcelain face, more often to me will be shown, perhaps her presence, will cause my pallors, cure to make itself known. The king sent messengers through the country, the happy news to bring, I, her father, have by my edict, Crown Tanadin as our king. Like the shining sun, she sheds her light, on every person and thing. All her subjects, should come behold her, that they may her praises sing. All the Arabs arrived, the number of nobles swelled to a crowd. Aftandile, young general, was there, radiant-faced and unbowed. 
and Sagrat, vizier, the king's close adviser, with wisdom and doubt. When the throne was installed, they said, it is priceless and they were proud. Tanadin was led in, by the joyful king, to where the throne stands. He seated her, and set the crown, on her head with his own two hands. He gave her the scepter, clad her in the robes, a ruler demands. The maiden seems to be like the sun, all-seeing, she understands. The king and his reverent retinue, stepped back a pace or two. Men from many places blessed to Nathan, their praises were not few. Their strong voices blessed her. Symbols played sweetly, and the bugle blew. Tears slanted down, the queen's raven lashes, she wept, and wept anew. Tanadin feared, she was unworthy, to sit on her father's throne. With each tear, that streaked the rose garden of her cheeks, her doubt was shown. The king said, every father surpassed by his heirs, that much is known. The sight of you, has put out the fire, that had within me grown. Then he said, weep not, my daughter, but hear what I'm about to say. You are an Arabian king, named by me a sovereign today. From this moment on, this kingdom is yours, to do with as you may. You, who do things wisely, be calm now and compose yourself, I pray. The sun shines alike, on roses and dung, on everything we see. You, alike to the greatest and the lowly, merciful should be. The one, who's getting bound, binds himself, the generous bind the free. The sea's waters, flow in and flow out, be generous like the sea. Bounteousness, like Eden's poplars, is planted in kings to use. The generous are obeyed even, by those with treacherous views. Whenever, food and drink are offered you, accept them don't refuse. What you give to others, you will keep, whatever you don't you'll lose. The maiden listened, her father's wise counsel never sated her. She bent to his words, his teaching never anticipated her. The king drank and sang, pleased by his daughter and what awaited her. Tanadin made the sun seem flawed, the sun that imitated her. The new queen then summoned her trusty tutor, and was heard to say, Bring hither to me now all my treasure, as quickly as you may. Bring me all my sealed up riches, everything which is mine today. They did her bidding, and without measure, she gave her wealth away. With seeming pleasure, she dispersed her treasure, everything she had. Enriching both, the lowborn and the highborn, seemed to make her glad. She said, I am doing what I was taught, so do not think me mad. Let no one, keep back any treasure, this is as my father bade. She ordered them, go now and open up, my vaults full of treasure. You, stable master, lead in all my horses, such is my pleasure. They brought everything she said, and she gave to all without measure. The soldiers were sweeping up riches, like pirates at their leisure. All her wealth, like booty from the Turks, they took as they were able. They took her pampered Arab stallion, a steed worthy of fable. Gifts whirled down like a snowstorm, falling from the sky to the table. None left empty-handed not serving, maids, nor lads from the stable. One day passed, and still, the whining and dining in no way decreased. The great gathering of merrymaking troops, continued the feast. The king hung his head, and seemed unhappy, to say the very least. People asked each other, what ailed him, and their worrying increased. At the head of one table sat Abtandil, with his face so bright. Leader of men, swift as a tiger or lion, known for his might. While Sagrat, the worthy vizier, sat proudly at Avtandil's right. Both wondered aloud, what ails the king? Why is he so pale tonight? He must be in a bad mood, to find no joy in this evening's sport. Nothing bad has happened. He's received no calamitous report. Avtandil said. Let's ask, if he's mad at us, or someone at court. Approaching him with banter, might bring his unhappiness up short. So Sagrat and slender Avtandil, filled their glasses to the brim. 
and walked with slow and easy gait, to where the king sat looking grim. And obediently knelt, with smiling faces, in front of him. The wise vizier, in good spirits, spoke lightly, as if on a whim. The reason you look so unhappy, king, is one we guess or know. To see all your treasure squandered, must have been a terrible blow. Your open-handed daughter, has let all your vast possessions go. She should not be sovereign, why did you bring upon yourself such woe? The king looked at the vizier with a broad smile, when he heard this speech. He was astonished, how had the vizier dared to so overreach? You speak honestly, the king said. I don't consider it a breach. Though, if you think me avaricious, you don't know whereof you preach. What has hurt me, vizier, is not the loss of everything I own. But, knowing I am old, and all the days of my youth have been sown. And yet, there is no man in this whole kingdom, that is to me known. Who has learned from me manly arts, and thus to my level has grown. I've tenderly nurtured my daughter, and watched proudly as she grew. But God hasn't given me a son, who could do the things I do. There's none to rival me in archery, that's the thing I most rue. Only Avtandil is like me at all, because I taught him true. Thus spoke the king and the noble, lad listened calmly all the while. He bent his head respectfully, as was his customary style. But, he seemed to light up the plains, with the shining white of his smile. The king asked, Why do you smile? Have I shamed you, or put you on trial? Why do you smile? He asked again. Be so kind as to let me know. The youth said, I'll speak, but do not let, my word seeds of anger sow. Be not offended by what I say, nor let your wrathfulness show. Don't consider me as insolent, or punish me as a foe. Said the king, I'll try not to get angry, at your honest reply. I swear on my Tanadin's life, you have no reason to be shy. Avtandile said, Calm words are convincing, all boasting I decry. You shouldn't boast of your archery skills, and now I'll tell you why. I'm earth under your feet, but as an archer, you to me must yield. Let's wager your men as witnesses, and see the best man revealed. You boasted, that none could best you, so let our bargain now be sealed. Let them declare the winner, when we take our contest to the field. The king, ever more cheerful and eloquent, responded with glee. He joked with the knight, you're so bold, because you are like a son to me. You know I won't be angry, that's why you confront me recklessly. I think, you'll need exceptional luck to win, but we'll have to see. I will not let you thus dispute with. The king affirmed with zest. Say the word and we will compete, let neither of us shirk the test. Let's make good men witnesses, as we endeavor to see who's best. And the archer whose praises should be sung, will soon be manifest. The answer was not long in coming. I agree, Avtandile said. They no longer acted like warlike men, but joyful youths instead. They set the terms of the wager, to which each of them would be wed. Whoever is beaten, must walk, around three days with a bare head. We've decided to take with us, twelve good riders, the king said, when, the feast was over. To bring the king arrows, another twelve, then. Your Shermadin alone is equal, to all those twenty-four men. They'll count throws and hits, without mistakes, or lies, then they'll count again. To the gathered huntsmen the king said, from the great plains level ground. Beat an uncountable herds of game as many as can be found. Invite soldiers to witness the contest, good men from all around. The wassail and banquet then ended, with many a pleasant sound. He, who created heaven and earth, out of his power and might. The poet's art, was from the start, a branch of wisdom's mighty tree. The task of poetry is holy, as all godly men agree. I, Rustabli, wrote this poem, a man whom fate would not release. Out of a tale, I made a poem, a sparkling diamond centerpiece. An ancient Persian tale I took, and in the Georgian tongue retold. 
until that time, it was an unset pearl, from hand to hand it rolled. A lake of ebony I used as ink, my reed was like a dart. Whoever hears, the lines I have written, a spear will pierce his heart. Shota, Rustabli. The Knight in the Panther's Skin.